and welcome back to me channel unless you're new here at which point just welcome my name is rusty and this is me channel where i talk about my favorite movies mostly horror and my favorite music mostly metal and welcome back to another little dystopic movie of mine that i like it is probably one of the most fucked up movies that dystopic movies that i've seen since like a clockwork orange i mean this movie is wacky with the capital w and that is the bad batch jason momoa keanu reeves suki waterhouse on the cover Now, The Bad Batch was released in 2016, and it star. It was directed by Anna Lily Amarpois, Anna Lily Amarpois, who writ, wrote and directed it. It stars Suki Waterhouse, Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves, Jim Carrey, Giovanni Ribisi. Is that the big ones? I think so. Jada Fink. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So you have Suki Waterhouse, Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves, Jim Carrey, Giovanni Ribisi. So yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty powerful cast, um, especially for this type of fucked upness <laughs> but the bad batch opens we're introduced to well we don't really see her at first but we hear her uh, we're introduced to arlene as she is being tattooed back here um to be exiled into a giant wasteland for prisoners known as the bad batch now the bad batch to be part of the bad batch means that you are a criminal uh you have a mental disorder you um refuse to conform to society um they would put me in the bad batch because of being a weirdo well being a skate punk metalhead probably for being gay too um although it doesn't say that in the movie but I'm just saying, it's sort of like, it's like Escape from New York, but it's not for just prisoners. It's for whoever society de deems that you're an asshole, and you should go in there, and you don't conform and do what you're supposed to. They put people in there for also, well, like, you'll find out, like, why Jason Momoa is in there. So we're introduced to Arlene as she is being put in there. They take her to the gate. Uh, the cops do, and they put her in there and close the gate behind her. She can't get out. They give you a backpack with one hamburger, and bye. <laughs> you know, and now you have to understand, this is like Escape from New York. I mean, it's like a, an, an entire world of its own in the middle of the Texas desert. So it's, um, I don't, I don't know if they actually say how big it is, but it's like, hundreds of square miles in the desert is this thing so it's a giant wasteland that these people are just exiled to so she is put in there and we see her walking um, it isn't too long before she is captured um, by some guys riding on a golf cart um, kind of thing they capture her and they take her and we wake up at this weird this weird encampment ran by Miami man and that's Jason Momoa and he's got the big he's got a big Miami man tattoo across his chest and it isn't as soon as she wakes up like this nasty looking and it all looks like Mad Max you know what I mean um, everybody looks weird and um, Jason Momoa is like surrounded by bodybuilders, which was also very weird. Like everybody's these really buff giant. They all look like Jason Momoa's body body wise. They're all buff butch. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
I don't know what that was all about. And they don't tell you what that was all about. It looked like a gay guy's paradise is what it looked like if you're into jocks, gym, gym rats. But um, <laughs> so I don't know what that was about. But she wakes up and she's chained to a ground, to the ground. And this funky looking woman comes over to her and injects her in the arm with um, something. But it doesn't knock her out. And then injects her in the leg with something. And then promptly walks over and saws her arm off with a hacksaw. And you're like, is this the star of the movie? This is weird. So it saws her arm off and then puts it on a grill. And then comes back and saws her leg off. And you're like, this is fucked up. <laughs> you know? And... Okay, so they're like a cannibal thing. So she has that, you know, she's all cut up. She's now missing. Oh, and, and it shows her like seal the wound with the bottom of the frying pan that's boiling hot, you know, like carterize it. Wow. So you're like, okay, I, 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 it's 15 minutes and, and you're already seeing the star have her leg and arm cut off. This is. Okay, I, how long is this movie? Two hours? And okay. <laughs> I, I think this is going to be pretty weird. So, they show her that night. Now, there's a couple other people chained up, too. So, they show her that night. Um, I guess she's probably wondering, how the fuck do I get out of this with the dog collar and chain? You know? So, they show her then grab a bedpan and take a shit in it and then the next morning you see the cook walk over to her and she has smeared her own feces all over herself and I'm like well I'm sure you don't want to cook that so I imagine they're going to have to clean her off is that what she did that for so they like cleaned her. So she like undid the chains and drug her over to a place where she could wash her off. And I'm like, well, do what you got to do, <laughs> you know. And she got a big piece of rebar and stuck it under her while the woman went and got water. And when she come back, she beat her to death with that rebar. And you're like, okay. So you are freshly amputated. With one arm and one leg gone. What do you do? So she like scoots around until she finds a skateboard. And then she like lays on the skateboard. And I'm like, girl is ingenious. She's got some ingenuity, <laughs> at least. So she's like, and you know pushing herself along on her back with the skateboard, and she actually manages to get out from the guards. She manages to get out of this thing. And she so she's like crawling across the desert on her back <laughs> with like vultures and ravens like following her going, die bitch, I'm hungry. So, you know, she's doing that, and you're like, wow, this movie is fucked up. <laughs> When she is then found by the hermit. And it's, it looks like your typical homeless guy pushing a shopping cart full of shit. And that's Jim Carrey. So there's nothing comedic about this movie. <laughs> Let me warn you in advance. There's nothing comedic about it. He is not in a comedic role in any way in this movie. Um, so he finds her and he puts her in his cart and he takes her to comfort. Now, comfort is another encampment. This one, however, is very different. They have electricity, they have flushing toilets, they have houses. Um, obviously it was one of the towns that was left inside this, um, uh, wasteland when they, you know, wired it all off. Um, and so this place is ran by the dream. 
and the dream is played by Keanu Reeves. So the hermit drops her off at comfort and we then kind of fast forward to five months later. So five months later, we get introduced to characters like Screamer, the Screamer, who is Giovanni Rabisi, who I've always had a crush on. But Giovanni Rabisi, and he is a nut. He's a He can play a nut real good. And um, he keeps talking about weird stuff. And when Arlene asks, you know, he keeps talking about you have to find the thing, the thing that allows you to live in this new world of theirs so they're talking about that she asks him what that thing is he says you've got to find it yourself um we go back and we see miami man back to his encampment where he grotesquely butchers and cuts up this girl to cook and that is like a really difficult scene i mean this thing is i mean he's a he's a very he's evil <laughs> um now arlene of course she is also pissed as anyone would be for having your leg and arm taken off and eaten so she's she's still i think she's still a little bitter about that and so she decides that she has basted in her bitterness for long enough so she gets a gun and she's going to go back to Miami man right so she goes after Miami man but on the way there she runs across Maria and Honey now Honey is a little girl that you pretty much have figured out is Miami man's daughter and Maria is like his assistant and and caretaker. So they're at this dump and she finds them because she don't know where Miami man, uh, the bridge, where My, Miami man's encampment is. So she ends up finding Maria and this girl. Now, Maria had just broke her leg. So she ends up, she recognizes her. And from that, from Miami man's encampment, she recognizes her and then kills her after they have a cool little discussion about, are you seriously begging me for your life after you ate me? Really? The conversation's not going to go the way you want it to, no matter what you say. <laughs> and she kills her. And then she takes the little girl and they go back to comfort. So she's sort of like, she takes her back to comfort and Miami man eventually comes and finds, because he's like worried, like where the fuck are they? So he comes and he finds Maria dead in the junkyard and his daughter's gone. So he's like kind of losing it and he's looking all over the desert for his daughter. And meanwhile, she's you know, being taken care of by Arlene back at comfort. We see all, how everybody lives, the parties, stuff like that. Um, she ends up going to one of the dreams parties and um, she gets given, I guess, acid. And so she trips balls like basketballs <laughs> and the dream and his harem he's got like a harem of women so they find honey they don't know anything i mean they, it's not like they did it on purpose they just found this girl little girl wandering around um because she had lost her rabbit they take her and they put her in they take her in so arlene is so stoned she's trying to find her she ends up going back outside of comfort, back outside of town into the desert where she's walking around tripping balls on the inner universe and Miami man finds her. Now he doesn't recognize who she was. I'm not sure he even saw her, you know, back when they first captured her because 
only the two guys that captured her and I guess the cook <laughs> and Maria was the only people that actually saw her. So he doesn't know who she is. He does. Of course, I imagine he could look at her arm and leg and figure she may be an escapee from his encampment, but he doesn't think anything about it. So she knows who he is, though. And um, so he ends up finding her, and then the next morning when she comes to, he ends up telling her, showing her the picture, because he's like a really good artist, like a draw, you know, sketch and drawer. So he shows her the picture, and he's like, you know, do you, have you seen this little girl? And she's like, no. And he says, well, I was told, because he had ran across Hermit, and Hermit had told him to look for comfort for that girl. So he's like, okay, well, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to fucking kill you. Or you are going to go into comfort because I can't. He would be shot on sight if they saw him come near that place. So he's like, you're going to go into comfort and you're going to find this girl and you're going to bring her back to me. Or I'm going to kill you. Now, personally, I thought, well, if it was me, I would just go back in comfort and never come out. He can't come in. So, what you gonna do? <laughs> What's up? But, that was me. So she must find her. Uh, they end up running across this man on a moped that was an interesting scene, and he ends up like Matt, uh, M.M., Miami man, M.M. like kills him ugly and takes her to comfort, close enough to comfort, for her to go in. So, on the way there, though, they kind of get stuck in a sandstorm. And so in the cave, she ends up like getting him to say why he was in there. Why did you get put in the bad batch? He's like, well, why did you? You know, and she's like, I just couldn't keep my mouth shut, you know. And showed my ass a lot. And he's like, well, all I did was he was an illegal immigrant. That's all he was. He had come over from Cuba um, at 16. And she's like, okay, but what did you do? And he said, I didn't do anything. I worked construction. I, I didn't commit any crimes. I was not a criminal. But immigration caught me, and I didn't have papers and that's enough to get me in the bad batch. So I'm like, okay, well, so he's pretty bitter too, but I still don't like him. I mean, he's still a fucking cannibal, murdering people. I mean, raise rabbits or something. They got plenty of them in comfort. They don't eat people in comfort, right? They grow like vegetables and stuff in, in the aqua farm, and they, um, they like uh, have parties and do drugs and and um, they grow, they have raised rabbits and stuff like that. So they don't eat people. <laughs> they like have a little economy and they, you know, they live all right. So he doesn't have to be butchering and eating people. So I'm not going to give him any leeway. So he's in the bad batch for being an illegal immigrant. She's in there because she just said she was a juvenile delinquent doing petty shit. So that's when he had made that deal with her about you're going to go and get her, look for her. Um, a dude shows up out of the blue and like shoots Magic Man, Magic Man. See, I just want to call him M.M. because I keep going to call him Magic Man, Miami Man. So shoots him pretty good right about here and her and him get away on the moped that he had stole from that guy he had killed if you follow along and they go back to comfort so now she's in there she's back home at comfort um she ends up though and and this is where my opinion of her changed she goes right back out pretty much the next day looking for him. 
she goes and she ends up finding the cave, but she can't find him. That's because Hermit had found him. And Hermit had, uh, you know, you never hear Jim Carrey speak in this movie. But he had found him. He had took and dressed his wounds. He had cooked him a raven. You know, hey, the dude eats people. I'm sure a raven's not going to hurt him. But, you know, so he fed him, um, got him watered and feeling better. And the next day, you know, he's like, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And he walks over and he takes his knife from him, puts it in his pocket, and hands him one of those snow globes, you know. And so Mammy Man is like, hmm. Now, you you know, I guess what he was saying was, this knife, the violence, the cannibal, the eating, the, the doing what you do, you're lost because of it. What you need is happiness. What you need is goodness, you know, dancing in the rain, skiing in the snow. You need, you need hope and goodness, and you need to leave the violence and the cannibal. That's what I got from it. It's sort of like an analogy, you know. So she does end up, she can't find him. So she goes back to comfort um, and starts trying to find the little girl again. Takes her a while, but she ends up finding out that she is now with the dream. So she ends up like going and I guess requesting an audience is how you would do it. Um, and he actually brings her up and he sees her. And there's this really good conversation between Keanu Reeves, the dream, and her talking about life and philosophy and stuff like that. And basically, after it is all over, she has basically asked to be part of his harem. So he's like, okay, you know, you can be part of the harem. And she goes into the bedroom and she waits and they, you know, bring her the clothes and stuff like that. But instead, what she does is we see that she has snuck the gun into the complex in her fake leg. So she takes this pregnant, one of his pregnant harem, hostage, and says, I'll let her go at the gate. So they let her go. And I'm here sitting thinking, going, you're fucking nuts. You know, you're crazy. You're, 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 you're where you belong, to be honest with you. And she goes back to Magic Man. She's got Honey and Honey's Little Rabbit. And there she goes and she finds him. He is, he is overjoyed to find his daughter. And they sit down around a campfire, you know. And Honey is like, I want spaghetti. That man made me spaghetti. The other man made me spaghetti. And because um, they can even make pasta at his, at, at Comfort. So it's sort of like Barter Town and Mad Max, right? So they're living pretty well. Uh, they're living okay in comfort. So he takes that little girl's rabbit, and he walks over there, and he kills it, and he cooks the rabbit. And the little girl's crying a little bit, but she's eating the rabbit. And Arlene is sitting there with Magic Man, <laughs> Miami Man. Yes, I love that heart song. And I just, you can't say Miami man. That's so stupid. M.M. But so they're sitting around the campfire and they are, you know, looking at each other like maybe we can have a new life, you know. And I was like, I wrote, bitch is crazy and in there for a reason. You understand, she seems to be falling 
in some way for the dude who cut off and ate her arm and leg. What kind of sick shit is that? Don't, I mean, that damn near tops these serial killer groupies who, who uh, women who, who like write and fall in love and go and marry fucking serial killers in prison. It's like, I know you killed 14 women and butchered them, but I think you're cute and, and you know, we should get married. It's like, the fuck? <laughs> I think yeah, it's like you can Baker Act some. Let me tell you something. If I was to go right out here in my front yard, actually my front yard's there. But if I was to go, whichever, if I was to go right over here, out there in my yard, and just start talking shit to the stars about philosophy, I'm not crazy. But if I just sat out there and started going, oh. Cassiopeia, why is my life such shit? And I said, the fucking cops would come and Baker act my ass and put me away for talking to the stars. But they don't do shit when a dumb bitch sits at home, writes prisoners in prison, a serial killer who murdered 16 women, writes them, sends them sex letters, and then goes and puts a ring on their finger and marries the motherfucker, and nobody puts them in the hospital. What the fuck is wrong with the United States of America? <laughs> Here this bitch is, sitting down, left comfort, which is exactly what it says. They got noodles, man. They got spaghetti. They have parties. They got a DJ. They, they got toilets that flush. And instead, she kidnaps this little girl back takes him back to this cannibal-eating motherfucker and is sitting out at the desert making goo-goo eyes at the motherfucker who ate her legs. Or her leg. So the one thing <laughs> that I came away from this movie with was I was like, you know, now that I think about it, Escape from New York, The Bad Batch, you know, Places like this are not that bad of an idea <laughs> because I didn't find one motherfucker in there that shouldn't have been in there. Even the cute ones. I'm like, I can crush on Giovanni Ribisi all the fuck I want to, right? But he was nuts and needed to be in there. <laughs> and do I have any sympathy from her for her? Well, I did. She was a juvenile delinquent, probably in there for not a reason to be have this happen to her. I'm sure she didn't do anything bad enough to have this happen to her. But still, you're put in there, you're kidnapped, you have your leg and your arm chopped off and eaten, cooked and eaten, and then you, you find that there is a good place in there, and instead you trip balls on acid and make goo-goo eyes at the dude who ate your leg Rekidnap his daughter that you originally kidnapped from a cannibal camp. You rekidnap her from the drug camp, which I don't know about you. But if I had to choose my druthers, I'd rather hung around a bunch of dope addicts on acid dancing to Britney Spears. God. I would still choose that. You know, because I can just sit back and laugh at the motherfuckers tripping balls. I can't laugh at the motherfuckers cutting up my friend and eating me for dinner. So she kidnaps the little girl from the cannibal camp. I don't care if it was her daddy or not. She kidnaps a kid from the cannibal camp, takes it to the good camp where they got spaghetti and disco re-kidnaps her from that and goes and decides to get herself exiled from the place where you can flush your toilet and eat spaghetti to get exiled to take her back to the cannibal guy to make goo goo eyes around the campfire under the stars with a cannibal. Bitch is right where she needs to be. 
and I had absolutely no sympathy for her anymore. And I think that's one of the things that this movie does is like you you end up not you end up not feeling about this place like you thought you would because you know like oh dystopic horrible escape from new york you know throw people there fucking you know it's bad it's bad and then you end up like going well you know i don't think that what he was thrown in there for to be honest i don't think that he should have been thrown in there for that i don't think she should have been thrown in there for that i imagine a great deal of the freaks because there is like at the party scene when the dream is talking to this big huge crowd that live in comfort he talks about we're the bad batch and what made us bad and he gave off a list a lot of which did not deserve to have this kind of stuff done to them for just what for just what refusing refusing to work a certain job you know it's like the handmaiden's tale and they nail your ass for the wall for not believing in their religious beliefs yeah you know so it was obvious i'm sure there's a lot of people who don't deserve to be in there but the ones who do deserve it you know miami man may not have deserved to be thrown into this savage wasteland just because of what he did being found with no papers but he became a monster that needed to stay in there. He didn't deserve to be in there. But he damn sure deserved to stay in there. And the same with her. A juvenile delinquent. And you get your arm and leg eaten for it and thrown into the savagery. No. But you became a monster just like he became a monster. You know, that's my feelings on it. <laughs> but so, yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot of philosophical debates you can have with yourself about this movie. If you haven't seen it, you really should. One thing I said, though, for a certain kind of people, I could I could see a place like that being relevant. But yes. The Bad Batch. Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves, Suki, Suki Waterhouse, Giovanni Ribisi, Jim Carrey. Very nice, very cool, dystopic movie. And there you go. I really, really like it. Would I give it a 7.5? 7 7.4 out of 10. It's really cool, really make you think. You will see some weird shit. I mean, I just told you the basics of the story. I didn't tell you all the shit that you see <laughs> in this movie. And you see some shit. Some weird shit. It's a very trippy movie. And um, it does remind me of a psychotronic movie. You know, it's very trippy, very weird. Lots of weird imagery. Everybody acts really weird. It's a really cool dystopic movie. And I will see you in the next one. Love you, miss you, bye. Always remember, never forget, you're a very special person. Even if you're not part of the bad batch, you probably should be. All of us horror movie fans should be in the bad batch. Not in this bad batch. We're our own bad batch. And I will see you in the next. Love you, miss you, bye bye. I've chosen three more of these type of movies uh, to do. You know, take a little break from slasher horror and do some regular movies. But I will see you then. Love you, miss you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me babble. Have you seen this? What you think of this? It's fucked up. Really fucked up. And I like it.